Hello and welcome to Hope Training Academy. My name is Rick Barreto and thanks so much for spending some time uh, with us here on this video and we really want to highlight uh, another one of our students. Uh, and we are uh, particularly blessed and honored to share uh, some of the story of Dej. Um, as you're going to get to meet Dej over the next uh, several minutes, um, you know, it's actually he gives some amazing advice um, to uh, new students. And for most of the people probably that are watching this would either be uh, an existing student to Hope Training Academy, a brand new student perhaps entering in one of our uh, courses, A plus or one of our cybersecurity. Um, but we're really uh, pleased and proud to um, introduce uh, Dej as a great example of, um, you know, actually one of our very first students uh, way back when we started a, a couple years ago um, to really go through the entire program. And, you know, he has all three of his certifications through HOPE, uh, A plus, Network plus, and Security plus. So we're really excited to share um, his interview with, uh, with you uh, and go from there. Okay, so um, Hope Training Academy, as you see here, uh, it's something my wife and I uh, started a couple years ago as a way to give back to the community um, and really uh, provide opportunities to those for education um, and jobs and a new hope, you know, for uh, really people at the poverty level here uh, in Indianapolis. And uh, fortunately, our, our governor. Uh, has some amazing programs put in place to make this education free at absolutely no cost to all of our students. So it's really a blessing for our students. And uh, so, you know, we really, this is a picture of, of some of our, uh, our kids here and our family and actually a uh, little hope is right over here. Uh, so my wife and I have uh, various backgrounds, uh, myself as an entrepreneur, and these are just a few of the technology companies that I've created over the years, um, mostly in inventions of software, uh, video gaming, uh, video recording software, broadcast, and so these are just some of the uh, inventions and the companies that uh, I've been uh, so blessed to be able to uh, create and, and run and manage. And my wife is a uh, lifelong, uh, comes from a family of career educators herself being having our master's in education and we kind of put both of our uh, talent and skills together to form Hope Training Academy um, and once again if, if you're seeing this first maybe it's been an internet video or somebody shared that with you just a real quick overview we provide IT uh, and cybersecurity training for all of our students I know this is all entry level and this is these are some of the the path of uh, the courses. So this says IT Fundamentals, which is the very first uh, program that has a certification, um, A plus, Network plus, Security plus, and some other advanced cybersecurity um, courses. And so when you're going to hear about Dej, he started right down here, and he, he achieved what we always like to call like the the magic trifecta of entry level certifications a plus network plus and security plus those form the foundations of uh, a cybersecurity career so we wanted to highlight because he's achieved all three of those through hope training academy and then we have a business side that does quickbooks and microsoft office so between the two uh, students are able to to pick between the two we have a lot of courses available through our state of Indiana, uh, 15, 20 of them. This list is continually growing. Um, you see we've also got some coding, some game programming, which is you know my background, um, Python, and some other programming courses that we're going to be coming out with. But mostly we focus on the IT, cybersecurity, and business. We also have a, a federally recognized uh, cybersecurity apprenticeship. I know that's a a lot of words, <laughs> but basically it took us about two years to get this, but through the U.S. Department of Labor, we actually have this special uh, cybersecurity certification, meaning that somebody can come through our apprentice program, which you earn and learn, meaning you get paid as an apprentice, and then you can either work uh, for 
Hope Train Academy, another one of our partners, the Land Network, which is a cybersecurity company or other partners, and we'll actually place um, students part of this apprenticeship program in those companies. So they're learning and they're getting paid. Uh, and actually, it's kind of the equivalent of a college degree you, in cybersecurity. So any company that recognizes that as a degree will hire those uh, apprentices. As a matter of fact, on our Facebook page, it's there's an article, I think in Forbes, it was a national magazine citing Google, uh, and they have also certifications citing that nowadays, and this is COVID days, uh, literally they are hiring uh, graduates of basically uh, IT certifications uh, in lieu of college scholars, college um, diplomas. So let me say that again. Google <laughs> is hiring entry-level people uh, directly that have certifications such as this one or some of the ones that we teach as opposed to hiring people with four-year college degrees. The reason is it's very relevant, timely training, uh, and, and uh, uh, students can get that training right out of high school. So we've trained hundreds and hundreds of uh, students such as these. We've got some testimonials on our uh, YouTube page and our Facebook page, uh, which are you know very, very brief, but the one with Dej is a bit more in-depth. And uh, this was pre-COVID, obviously, where, um, you know, all of our sites, we have three sites. It's a very family-oriented atmosphere. So all of those students work together on site in our computer labs to really learn. And Dej was part of these programs. And now as COVID progresses, we're getting back to our, our schooling at our physical school. So this is a picture of Dej. We did a nice uh, case study article about him for the media. Here's him uh, holding our, our daughter, Hope. And like I said, uh, very near and dear because he was one of the very first, this is a picture down here of our very first class um, of uh, CompTIA students and he was one of those. So um, very near and dear to our heart, but you know, he really uh, caught our attention. Um, and here is uh, uh, the last picture I'll show you here is a picture of Dej. Uh, who was a graduate of Hope Training Academy, and John, who's another one. And I always tell this brief story that Dej kind of went through fast. It's a 12 to 14 week program. I think he went through an eight or 10. He was very motivated, as you'll hear in his testimonial, to really make a better life for his family. So he kind of went through the fast way uh, because of his life situation. And then John Medina, who's another one we will get a, another video on, um, he also passed the certification, but it took him much longer it, because he was a single father, he had two or three jobs, health issues, he had English as a second language, so he was a, primarily Spanish speaking. So he had a lot of obstacles, but uh, you know he persevered and over, over I think almost a year, he was able to persevere obtain his A-plus certification, and he afterwards uh, spent uh, months in our lab learning, even after his A-plus, becoming an instructor, which all of our instructors were former uh, students. Um, and then the, this is a picture showing uh, one of my companies, iRecord, and our family company, Word Systems, actually hired both these uh, guys to be field technicians with high-paying salaries. And uh, in this case, Dej um, worked out of Indiana, and now he works out of our Texas office as a remote help desk, and John works still here in Indianapolis. And we're creating a, a pipeline at iRecord of new uh, students to get that experience, the learn and earn, cybersecurity apprenticeship, and um, you know, it's really a, a tremendous win-win. So without any further setup, because I know you didn't come to hear me talk, uh, but you heard, came to hear Dej talk. So like I said, this is about a 60 minute interview. I know it's in depth, but I really wanted to roll, I mean, it was probably about almost a two hour recording, but we, we pared it down to the most important parts, and really he has a lot of stuff to say, and especially if you're a new student or even existing student, use this as motivation because he here is somebody who's appeared just like you. He came from Nigeria, he'll tell his whole story, but um, 
you know, he went through a lot of the things that relate some of the things and the obstacles and the advice he has for not only getting uh, one certification, but his second and third. And then he also talks about his family, his successful career, career options, and continue growth, um, in his case, in a job towards a, a major six-figure uh, income in cybersecurity. So anyway, thanks for your time, and we are more than happy and pleased to uh, introduce to you uh, Dej's story. Enjoy. Okay, um, thank you very much for your question. Um, my name is, I'll, 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 I've got two versions to my name. I'll give it to you as I was Christian, yeah. and then I will let you know what it's, I found over time it's easier to go by. My name is Ayodichi Afuye, and um, over time I found out that people couldn't, you know, go with the undulations of our local dialect, and I just went by Dej. So um, that's what people know me as today. So you, so it's fine to just call me Dej. Um, well, I am from Nigeria in Africa and uh, from the southwestern part of Nigeria. Um, I came into, I, well, I, I had, a, uh, my, my background in Nigeria was I was in the media communications industry for a little while. I ran my own business. I did good for myself just a little bit right there. And then um, when I got an opportunity to, um, you know, move over to the United States, I did with my family. And um, upon getting here, trying to plug into uh, the level of, because like I said, I was running my business, uh, trying to plug into that level where I was operating at in Nigeria was a challenge. So um, I had to rediscover myself. I had to, um, uh, you know, that, that I, I read somewhere that, um, you know, there's, there's horizontal knowledge and then there's vertical knowledge. So um, I discovered that I am this person who is multi-talented, like I'm a jack of all trades pretty much, but a master of none. And the, the work um, system in the US is such that you're supposed to be really good at one thing, which is a vertical um, knowledge here. So I needed to rediscover myself, pick one part of the many things I was interested in and go run with that all the way to the end. So uh, that was uh, that, well, that's, I, I, that was my reality back then. And then um, fortunately I was able to uh, come across a career fair that was organized. I uh, went in there and um, Rick, you were there, Kara was there. Um, you guys uh, made a presentation about Hope Training Academy. And I mean, there were, there were a couple of other schools who came in to present there, but you know, somehow I was fortunate. I chose you guys, and and that was the that was the beginning of you know fortune for me. I would say so. Um, uh, like yeah, I you know, that. I came into Hope Training Academy. Yes, uh, I came in, and and uh, I remember how you were so supportive of all of us then as students. Um, Oh, I guess I guess I'm going too far, but no, that, you just pretty much I guess wanted to know. Okay. No, that's perfect. And I, the only thing I was going to ask is, so when you came to the United States, uh, yeah. did you know you, you didn't know anybody over here? Did you? You just came over here without I, knowing anybody, or did you? I I knew a few people, not like family, just like. Uh, friends of friends, someone that, you know, back in Nigeria, you knew that, oh, this person is in the U.S. And sometimes they came visiting and I could put a face to their names, uh, but not like I had family here. And then, you know, upon coming in here to the Nigerian community in, in the U.S., it's pretty close-knit, you know, church and a few other networks that once you get in there, everyone is pretty much every other person's brother. Mm -hmm. So getting to know more people shouldn't, you know, wasn't that much of a challenge upon coming in here. So. And then, yeah, where that, did that. you feel that uh, when you started out with your jobs? Because I think you didn't you work. You said in. Uh, I can't remember. You had a couple jobs before and during while you were while you were going to school at Hope, right? Yeah. What were you? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, I like I said earlier when uh, when I was trying to answer your first question. Um, I could not give most recruiters 
and, and, and potential employers, I couldn't give them exactly what they needed, which was depth of, of an area of expertise. I couldn't because, you know, I, I was a business owner back in Nigeria and in the media industry, it's not like there's a skill you bring in and then you just go to an employee, potential employer. I'm like, I've been doing this for a couple of years. So uh, I couldn't do that. So all I could uh, do to, you know, eke out a living for my family was you know, menial jobs, I would say, you know, work in a warehouse, just stuff that, you know, they just, you just need to show up and, and work. That's it. Like, you know, it's not, they weren't trying to, you know, get any talent from you other than maybe your muscles and your commitments to being there every day. So uh, that was pretty much what I was doing uh, before I was able to make a transition while I was uh, in your program. And you were probably just doing like our, like how, like you would make how much like minimum wage, maybe? How much minimum wage, make? pretty much. Yeah. Minimum wage. Oh, uh, well, minimum wage. And, you know, back then uh, the game game was uh, the more hours you put in, you get some overtime. So the overtime was what made it a little worth it. But the overtime, of course, would mean more time away from your family, away from chasing your goals you know, doing something that is not like it's the best thing in the world for you to do, like that you would love to do. So, uh, yeah, but to answer your question, it was pretty much minimum wage. Yeah, and I remember you saying that because, you know, obviously, you know, you hated being away from your family because, right. like you said, to get more money, you have to uh, work longer, longer hours away from the family. And then I think at the time your, your wife was working too, and yes. you had, what, two little ones? Yeah, two. I got, I had two little kids little kids one was still a thought but they were both toddlers at the point i remember here yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was still probably not enough to you know both you and your wife had to work to support right. your family right right yeah yeah there was that too because i i i, I had this friend and you know whenever we talked she would always tell me that the with the comfort like you know being comfortable doing what you do starts when you begin to use your brains. You know, it stops when you're just, you know, using your muscles. So uh, you're right. I, I wasn't, I, w I needed to do something else that I could unleash the full potential of what I know that, you know, what I feel that I had in my, <laughs> in my yeah. brains. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, they're, they're, it's different for everybody. There are people that uh, they're, yeah, there are people that, like, I, I know somebody, for example, I, I hope it's not too much of a digression, but I know somebody that says she cannot lead her team. She She's not cut out to be a leader. That's just her. She's okay with just having someone do the heavy thinking and just tell her what to do. That is her. I know people who are like, you know, gene buffs, not like there's anything wrong with being that, but getting a job where you get to you know uh work out so to speak it's a plus for them because that's what they want right so but from my background from what i know what i my perception of success from the image i want to create for my kids you know growing up i wanted something like i, I grew up seeing my dad at work in an office right in an office we, you know i grew up seeing him wake up in the night to study he, that's he, that's what I grew. That's what I think when I when I think of work. I think of people, you know, with papers and computers and doing stuff. I I I think of seeing because I've it, it happened to me a number of times. You know, seeing my dad in the news. You know, because his 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 um uh, uh his opinion was valued so much as people went there to interview him and you know or he needed to you know come in on a situation that. I've seen him in the news. That's that's what success to me is. So coming and just make you know, just getting by wasn't going to be enough for me. No, it wasn't. So well, that sounds like, and that was my next question: is what? And it, you answered right there. What's the image? What what made you go and seek out, you know, the career fair and different things? And I think that's right. you just yeah. answered that. It's because you wanted yeah. Um, yeah. something better. Right. It's still relative right. to you, but it, kind of what st stood out to you in terms of that's where I want to spend time to get my certification. Right. Okay. Uh, for me, at the very point of making the decision, at that point where 
uh, you and Kara were in that room that day, you know, pitching to us. Um, for me, it was the location. It was the location. Uh, it was close to a job that I was working at the time, really close, like practically behind <laughs> the, <laughs> practically behind the, the, the location where the, you know, where I was doing that job. So um, for me, it was the location. But upon getting in, like the very first day, uh, not not I hadn't even gotten in. I remember you gave me, you offered an invitation for me to come over and take a look at, you know, what we will be working with and and i was impressed that was the day that you know i was i i i was really really uh i i felt really fortunate to you know to choose your you know hope training academy because um i got there i saw uh the state-of-the-art computers i saw the lab uh i remember back then you just got uh like tons of um I, I'm not sure how old they were, but you, you refer to them as retired systems from a friend of yours. Mm -hmm. He gave me tons of them. So we were, you know, practically <laughs> wallowing in, uh, you know, computer chassis and, you know, taking out hard drives. You know, I remember then you had this uh, little thing for us to do where um, we, we had like the chassis, the motherboard, everything. We had to put everything together. So it just helped to put the, you know, all of what we were studying in the um, A plus program, it just helped put everything together. So um, it, it was, it helped me a lot because I was able to visualize what I was reading and, you know, yeah. it, it, made, it made so much sense. It did. And it thanks, did. yeah, because that is true because, you know, obviously the A plus is great and you can study, it has all the facts. But as I tell people, so many, as I told all the students, it's like driving a bus. Like you can read a book about how to drive a bus, but until you sit behind the bus and drive the bus, it's yep. the same as computers. You have to open them up. You have to get cut a few times, you know, putting your hands in and, you right. know, ripping out right. power supplies. It's a very get, physical. Get, get zapped a few times. That's well. right. That's right. <laughs> Right, right. And so, and like, that. so you're right. And so that's what I agree of. As you know, anybody can go and watch Professor Messer videos all day and watch all this stuff on the internet. Mm -hmm. But having that somebody, uh, a group that can kind of help guide, and like you said, the IT lab and the uh, the physical skills. That's what we really try to stress, as you know. Like, hey don't spend the time here just sitting and reading like yeah. spend time in the lab uh right. you remember how you guys used to work as teams like you would yes. study yes. together right and not so much the instructor but it was really i thought what really was well like you guys put these little study groups together yes that yes. that you guys talked amongst yourselves and that was that as well those together. images that's, I, I, I that's love it. Chairs. That's the difference. You <laughs> got to sit in the chairs. That's <laughs> right, right. Those that... <laughs> images. Were, it was everything. Trust me, it was <laughs> right. So, but yes, I, I, I um, that was a plus. The fact that uh, you were able to put us together and and we were able to discover the team in you know in amongst us. We were able to discover the team amongst us. Uh, I think I said it right. So, uh, well. Uh, the, we were able to be accountable to each other and it helped a lot. It did help a lot. So uh, especially back then, the resource we were using for uh, practice questions, you know, it would, at some point it became like a competition, a healthy type though, like a competition amongst us that, hey, how, how far did you go? Uh, you know, like take simulated tests, you know, time, uh, uh, time restricted, just like the real thing. And then, yeah. What did you get? And it was it was something where you know throwing around amongst each other and trying to outdo the other person. Yeah. And it helped. It did help. It helped. Well, and I also say that uh, uh, we were all real impressed because even after you got your certification, you even were there for uh, a bit of time. And right. I still remember you would share with the other uh, classmates. You found the CBT nuggets. Say, hey, these were yeah uh, helpful to me. If you could talk about that, because I think that is another great reason for coming to a school or a class or a, a team, right? Because accountability and you can share amongst the other students. 
So I am a visual learner, and over time, I have, um, I, I, I wouldn't say developed a strategy. I just find, found out that that strategy worked for me. It doesn't matter what it is. If I get good content from somewhere, from someplace, like Hope Training Academy, uh, because of how I learn, I always, you know, go back to research and see if there's like a, like a, another direction to, you know, I, I always do that. So I've got folders upon folders of just different stuff, books that I probably would never read, but, you know, it's just an alternative, you know, angle to things, you know, that would help me have like a 3D um, understanding of whatever it is I'm trying to study. So, um, uh, at the time, while getting the very good, uh, you know, content from H from Hope Training Academy, I had I stumbled upon CBT Nuggets, and for me, now back to that job that I was working, right? So it was a job where I could, you know, put in my AirPods and set uh, videos to be on, you know, loops on my phone, and you know, and keep working while I was just, you know, listening to stuff. So. That's where CBT Nuggets came in to be very helpful for me. I was just, you know, it was just on repeat. I was listening to stuff. I was just immersing myself in all those things. I was thinking like, you know, they talk there, talking like they talk there, getting used to all the terms and all that. So uh, it helped me. And uh, when I got done with my certification, I, you know, was able to share with the team that, hey, I didn't realize that this thing was going to be that serious. It, it, it helps. Yeah, guys, have this. So, yeah, it, it, and I believe a few of them used it and were able to, yeah. you know, get their certification. And we still well. use that, you know, because oh, it right. used to be, we used to use what Pearson, but, you know, now, yeah. as you briefly saw here, you know, I'm using right. Professor Messer or you're right. using CBT because it's something, you know, and that's what I found too, studying for it, you know, you can listen to uh, Test Out uh, <laughs> and hear how they talk about DNS. Right. And it might like be a crappy explanation, whereas Professor Messer is talking about the same thing. It's a little bit more interesting. And right. there's different sources that explain it better than others. Transition next. So you got your, right. you went through, you did your studying, you got your yeah. earbuds, which is great. And you got your certification. Now, why don't you describe a little bit about the tech, what happened about when you were trying to get a job and then I can't remember like at what point like we introduced you over to word systems I record but why don't you talk mm -hmm. about ultimately like how your experience at HTA and what you learned then sets you up for um, that interview process okay um, well I after getting the um, certification I you know went all out put the resume together. Judy helped me put the resume together, actually. Oh, yeah, that's right. She yeah, did. she did. She did, yeah. Um, we got the resume put together, got uh, a, a template for the cover letter, and for as many places as I applied to, I you know, customized the cover letter and sent it out. And, um, I mean, I got a few interviews, but over time I, I fast got to realize that, hey, it just doesn't stop there, you know. Um, you know, sometimes you need a push, which is, you know, what, what down the road when, you know, it came up that potentially we could put in time spent at Hope Training Academy as um, like an internship for people who are deserving of it, of course. So that when down the road, when it came up that uh, we could uh, put the time at HTA as an internship on our resume, you know, things like that helps. It helps and it helps me. Uh, you know, because at, at that time I was able to, you know, get uh, better uh, attention from prospective employers. I was getting interviews and and then ultimately while, you know, some people were still thinking, I remember then I was on like the third stage of interview with IU and, uh, you know, they were still taking their time to come to a decision and, and I... I knew I was done with where I was working. I was already thinking, <laughs> yeah, at the next level. And, and then you you offered uh, to, you know, send me over to Chris and, you know, you, with all the recommendations and all that. And, and I went there and, and I got the job and I was, it was so fast. I was, it, 
it made a big difference. It made a big difference. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, that just that recommendation, which for the most part comes with, comes from you seeing me study, seeing me work, seeing, um, you know, the, the commitment I have to what it is, you know, I'm supposed to know how to do. So um, it, it, it helped. I would say it did help. Do you think, how do you think the A plus, do you think the, the, the knowledge you gained on the A plus and the, the, the experience, like how would you, would you feel, and obviously Chris could answer that better, but do yeah. you feel that helped you get in the door and kind of, I don't know, offered yeah. any advantage to a potential employer? It did. It definitely did. Because... Okay. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll break it down. It was so practical for me here. I see a job post. I see what the job requirements are. And there was a before and then there was an after. The before was uh, know how to do this, uh, be familiar with this technology. And it was all, you know, like I was reading Arabic <laughs> <laughs> for me, you know. And, and that's after years of working with computers. Like, uh, like I said, I, I was in the marketing communications industry. I've worked extensively with computers. I have commissioned, you know, high-end computers to be built for me to be able to use the high-power tools I was using to, you know, do my graphic designs and stuff. So it's not like I was a novice, but those job uh, requirements, they were strange. I couldn't relate to them but over the course of the um of the a plus uh, course and and after that and you know with extra studying and stuff i was i could relate to some of these technologies i could say oh yes i understand how this works and then you know being able to put them to practice at the lab helped also so uh, definitely a plus you know it's i i i don't know for us you know many people who will listen to this I believe at every point we must have struggled with tasks that we've been assigned at our jobs. So put it this way, A plus would help so much that, you know, you shouldn't even have to struggle with, with whatever tasks you're given at work. You shouldn't because it's, it's, it's very comprehensive. It takes care of everything you need to know, you know, coming into working with computers, especially if it's hardware, Yeah. you know, so it, it's, it, it is really helpful. I, I don't even know how to be. Yeah, you know, it's very, I mean, yeah, that's an upset, yeah. right? And then, so yeah. then describe a little bit of, you know, so you got the job. Um, and so describe a little bit. So when you first started, like, so the, the you know, kind of the, that transition, when you first started for with iRecord, what were those things that you were doing? And then uh, eventually how you have kind of progressed into like what you're doing now uh so why don't you talk about that a little bit okay um well i i guess it would make more sense if uh a lot of the people who will be listening to this know what i report is yeah. i record is a solution that uh helps for public safety law enforcement and a couple of like pretty much anybody but specifically for them because of the high uh security requirements for you know data and privacy and stuff. So, but iRecord is uh, it's like an all-in-one solution that can help them safely and uh, accurately capture interviews and, you know, uh, capture them in such a way that they are um, admissible in court, right? So that's right there, there's like a lot of, you know, security stuff involved and privacy stuff involved. So, but that's what I report is. But, and, but when you break it down, it's pretty much a, a, a system, a computer system that is purpose built and uh, you put in the software on it and make sure things work together. So um, now back to the fact that it is a purpose built system. When I started working at iRecords, one of, at iRecord, one of the first things I had to learn was how to build the system in iRecord specifications and you know i couldn't expect uh you know uh like that whole onboarding process and initial orientation that i got at work i couldn't expect anybody to you know start from the basics on yeah. what types of hard drives we have and what the different technologies are no no one will do that it's so that's where the a plus came in i was able to they were like okay uh these are the system requirements for this, and 
that's the supplies closet. So get this, you know, put this thing together, you know, and and you know, one one time when um, everything just made like the like made all the sense, like it, the A plus made so much sense at, uh, at that point. One one thing that uh, one experience rather that you know made me appreciate how much I had learned in the A plus uh, program was when. Uh, Someone just came in randomly, like a veteran IT person just came around and it was like, oh, uh, well, just so you know, uh, for this customer, we want him to have uh, a backup system. Like, essentially, what he wanted, what he was trying to say was he, they wanted two hard drives in there and they should be, you know, put together such that one, you know, backs up into the other. And that, that's the requirement for this site. And I was like, okay. And I could relate to what he was saying. He was, yeah, you know, I, I could relate to it. I could. I realized that for this one uh, build, I needed two hard drives. I needed to be able to connect them to each other so that one feeds into the other. In the case, the word he used was, "It's got to be redundant." Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, it's, it's a whole chapter. So, I, so I was one had to, you know, be there working, but not in the way of the other one. I, it, it made all the sense in the world to me to, you know, like, uh, I, I, I was sorry, I was really just so grateful that, hey, he said something, he used the technical <laughs> jargon, and I understood it, and I can do exactly what he wants, and I felt like, you know, there were new <laughs> I showed there. All that you studying, know, was, right? Yeah. Right, right, it, it, it helped, right? The A plus helps. But well, that's great. So, so you started out kind of, uh, building and assembling systems, which was identical to what you did at Hope. Um, yeah. And then, so what happened after you got uh, proficient and felt comfortable and your, your managers, you know, felt okay. that you were going on to the next? So then describe, like, what, what, what did you start doing next? Did you go, did they push you out into the field right away or did you kind of follow somebody around for a while? I did follow somebody around just for a little while, and but but uh, and then I think the very next step after building the systems, which well, they were kind of like hand in hand, pretty much, was understanding how to not just build the hardware section of things, but to build the software, like you know, put an OS on the put an operating system on the hardware that was built, make sure everything checks out okay. Uh, and then put in the software, the iRecord software, you know, link it up with the different accessories and peripherals that will make it work, the cameras and, you know, have the cameras, you know, because they are IP cameras, you know, the technology that was being used, uh, make sure that, you know, they could all, did the, they were all on the same network, so they could all work together, test it out for a few weeks. So uh, it was... I needed to get really used to how the entire system worked, and and over time I got to a point where after following someone, you know, shadowing someone for a little while, um, I got to a point where I could go and install this in customers in customer sites. Now, what is tricky about going to a customer site is you're not just going to put something up on a table and just plug it in and have it work. No, you're going to integrate it into your existing IT infrastructure, which for you know for some customers, they're pretty well funded. It's a, 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 a full <laughs> class data center. It's not, I wouldn't just say it's a control room or a server room or something. It's a full fledged data center. So, and yet, you know, and they, they let you in and they expect that you know what you're doing, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so uh, it, it was, uh, uh, there were moments and, I, you know, there were, there were moments, of course, at some point you get creative with trying to pick things really fast. So, but yes, the, I'm just trying to give you a picture here of- No, this is great, I mean- Being on the field and being able to fall back on knowledge that, you know, you acquired during the, uh, the course of the training. Well, you said something that was key. I mean, because there's like in SEPs, you know, you talk about hardware and PCs yeah. and RAID. Well, those are, yeah. as you remember, direct chapters mm -hmm. in A+. And right. then the next part you mentioned is IP. So just, you know, for example, you mentioned IP cameras, uh, right. IP subnetting, putting a computer onto the network, uh, subdomains, you know, subnets. Yeah. And you... You know, you really dove into the stuff that you learned in A plus with 
how an IP camera works. I mean, you didn't, right. they didn't necessarily teach you an IP, A plus how an IP camera works, but yet with the knowledge that you learn in A plus about IP, you just set it there. You kind of figure it out how this IP camera works and then how right. to integrate it to the customer. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's correct. Um, and now describe what you're, you're doing now. And this was in between a move, right? You actually moved yeah. from Indiana to Texas. Texas. So yes. talk about how the knowledge that you gained with the work experience and the A plus, and then the next certification you got, which was network plus mm -hmm. how those together helped you to do what you're doing now. Well, um, first of all, the technology that um, I record uh, put out there and it, it needs to be supported, right? And over time, the technology itself has evolved. Like when I record started out, I understand I was that was before my time, but I understand they, they, they weren't, you know, it, IP cameras wasn't the no. initial, um, you know, it was coaxial. Uh, analog cameras. cameras. Yes, analog cameras, you know, using coaxial cables and stuff. So, um, uh, over, you know, over time, uh, like I said, the technology is evolving. So, um, like in my case, uh, doing the Network Plus helped me to understand just a little bit more about uh, the different IT infrastructures that could be, you know, existing with a customer at the point of trying to integrate the iRecord system. To the customer side, that's one instance. Another instance, uh, over time at the job, I became more proficient. I understood the back end section of things, not just you know how things work, but because another level of understanding how things work is um, being able to troubleshoot when it's not working, right? Because you're oh, yeah. on the phone with a customer, you cannot physically see what's going on. You're going to work based off of the best description. The maybe not so technically uh, inclined uh, or technically savvy customer would describe to you over the phone. So you're supposed to figure stuff out, you know, ask the right questions and, you know, figure out what's going on and try to prefer a solution right there over the phone. You know, I got uh, to learn how to use a remote uh, support technology, like trying to remote into another person's computer. Now we did learn that we, we learned that in, in, in the A plus, but we just know it as remote desktop protocol. Like we're trying to learn the protocols then, but that's where it stops. You but didn't there's the go real into, right? you know, yeah, there's the real life application of it where you're trying to remote into a customer's computer. There's the process of getting permission from them. There's sometimes when even the customer who's willing to give you permission needs to talk with his IT to, you know, to, uh, you know, put exceptions in the firewall such that you can get in there, you know, otherwise it's just keep bouncing you off, you know, so they're uh, working with the network plus, uh, trying to study for the network plus helped me to understand just a little bit more and put me in a position to, um, essentially, you know, I was better positioned to, you know, give, better service at work and, and take on whatever new challenges, you know, came up. There are other uh, solutions that are supported at work as well. Nice, which is really heavy on networks uh, because it's, you're practically sniffing. Because <laughs> you know, so that's, that's how uh, nice uh, uh, recordings get made. You're practically sniffing an existing network of VoIP connection. You you put something in there and then you're trying to tap into it and that's how you get to record the calls all the 911 calls and everything it's actually like a tap that's in there that's a network thing so uh it did help me understand all of that and how to uh re you know relate to those kind of technologies to the point of being able to support it well and also and that's great because uh you know it's great hearing you know your evolution as your studying and knowledge grew from a plus to network plus and like you said, now you're talking to the manager of the data center. You're talking to people that have 10, 15, 20 years, right, running data centers. And right. now you're able to actually talk their language into, you right. know, to what you're doing. And quite frankly, in what you do, you're the expert. You know, they don't know anything about iRecord and, and no, NICE. But so they're asking you questions. Hey, Dej, how can we integrate this into the network and so tell i mean it really i think 
it, and it adds to your credibility it right, does. with the yeah. customer. It does. It does. It does. And and uh, at work, it's, there's this uh, uh, program, I would call it a program, that, uh, you know, one of our, my manager, my manager put together, um, which is he compiles feedback from customers. And when we do quarterly meetings or whenever we get to meet as a company, he reads out the uh, reviews from customers, how, you know, happy customers are. Like, it's, it, those are some things that, I mean, the A plus wouldn't teach you this, but if you are a service oriented person, there is a, there's another level of joy that you feel, a sense of fulfillment when um, somebody you assisted is really happy that thanks to you, I can do my job. Thanks to you, I'm not going to have a bad day. You know, things like that. Yeah. So, and, and, and they get to put these things into words in the reviews that they send back to the company. You know, and, and, and my manager in his wisdom which <laughs> I, I applaud you know reads it back to us and it he I, I bet he does realize how much it motivates us well, you yeah. know to, to do better to do better more nicely you know so ultimately um, I was fortunate uh, that uh, it was uh, the the opportunity came about that uh, for me to explore working remotely so instead of being a field tech I just became a full-time um, um, tech, uh, support tech over the phone. Well, help desk, pretty much. Yeah. Help desk. Yeah, so I uh, became a full-time help desk, help desk tech. They needed stuff. Uh, they, they had a ransomware attack, oh. and it wiped out the entire state's uh, IT infrastructure. What? Oh, yep. my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said ransomware, because that, and we're, we'll finish up here, because I think we're about the last part but when you said ransomware that t typically would come into uh, the third certification that you yeah. got was this uh, the um, security, security plus. plus so tell yeah. tell the, if you could share with the students and I think you said that right word ransomware how would what you are just learning or have learned in security plus potentially help with more experience as you you know continue to grow in your job oh well uh like I said, the core of our um, clientele is public safety. And if you know enough of IT security, especially in the US, the biggest customer is the government. The biggest uh, requirements, the biggest regulations are set up by the government for the government's IT infrastructure. So every other person just tries to toe the line. Yeah. So. Uh, so considering that our the, the bulk of our clientele is uh, law enforcement and public safety, you know, public safety, um, it's super important to um, have a tech who can, you know, who understands uh, limitations, who understands uh, privacy issues, who understands all of what it takes to be able to take care of that customer according to the customer's terms based on whatever regulations that customer needs to abide by. Like, for example, uh, I was supposed to assist a customer in Florida, and they said it straight up. This what they call the CGS compliance. It's a requirement for anybody who's going to go into their systems has to be CGS compliant. Otherwise, no. It doesn't matter how desperate they are for for IT support, if you don't have the CGS compliant, so that made I had to take the course. The well, it's not a course; it's just like a, uh, it's like a, it's a certification, pretty much, because we got uh, CGS, the CGS compliance certificates. We got that, so uh, the company was able to set that up for us, and that way we wouldn't. But I couldn't help the customer that day because I didn't have it. Um, uh, bottom line is uh, for security. Uh, Trying to um, trying to uh, apply stuff that I learned from Security Plus to working day to day, uh, I guess the biggest uh, uh, thing I was able to uh, transfer, you know, in terms of knowledge from the Security Plus study is I understood the limitations. Like, because uh, there is 
put it this way. Um, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this. That's why I'm using this analogy. That's okay. Let's take your like time. Like your, 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 your house, you've got locks on your door, right? So now the locks on your door uh, keeps you safe, right? But at the same time, uh, if you needed to get into your house in a hurry, what happens? It becomes a, uh, it becomes a headache trying to work through all the locks before you get inside. So security versus ease of use versus you know you being able to just get in there and come out. Uh, convenience, security versus convenience, mm -hmm. right? It's they're two, they're they're poles apart. So uh, sometimes, so for some people, it's about getting the right mix of both. For others, it's hardcore. It's security, security all the way. They don't care about convenience. Maybe because they've been burnt before. Maybe because they have to confirm with certain government regulations and stuff. So uh, Security Plus helped me understand that uh, that end that has to do with you know all the way security. I I got to understand that. I got to understand why it has to be that. I got to understand what it means to uh, you know have security as a top priority. You know, I got to understand all of that, and uh, Security Plus helped a lot. How would you, because this next part, and uh, I just want to, how would you think the best way to ask you about A Plus, Network Plus, Security Plus to a, a brand new student? You know, because a lot of those students come in, they say, hey, I want, you know, the hot word is cybersecurity, which it's so much, you know, there's so much involved in that. But somebody that, like yourselves, maybe is coming new to like an IT career with the ultimate goal of being in, it's like cybersecurity. How would you, what advice would you give for their road of these certifications? You know, kind of the best way to figure those uh, if, you've, if you've got a job yeah. or you don't have a job. Right. If uh, it's, it's different for everybody. For me, because of uh, all of what I had to juggle with, like, you know, juggle together rather, uh, a job, family, uh, studying and all that, uh, I had to take them one after the other. And I need to go out take one, take a breather, study up for the other one, take it, take another breather. So that's that's how it worked for me. But uh, in retrospect now, uh, and then, you know, given the opportunity, like when I say the opportunity, I mean, not all of us have to, you know, maybe work a very serious or demanding job. Not all of us have, have families that we have to take care of, you know, so, uh, it depends on what everyone's unique situation is, but uh, given the chance, uh, if I was to redo everything and if I had uh, uh, better control of all of what I'm committed to, I would do, I would uh, go for, if I got a program that could give me all three, not at the same time, but, you know, like uh, if the curriculum was set up such that, you know, I could take them, I mean, you know, I could... I could commit to finishing them within a certain time frame. I'll let me put it that way. It's it would make so much sense because over time I discovered that uh, uh, there are overlapping topics. You know, A plus, same topic in F plus, same topic in Security plus, right? So uh, it's easier. I mean, it's just it's a no brainer that read this thing once, get it down, and you know in any of the exams over the course of time that you need to do them, you can apply the same knowledge, right? And knowledge goes still, trust me, it does. So uh, you read something and then a year later, you're supposed to put it out and especially if it's not information that you get to work with every day. Right. So you would need to revise it. You would need to go over it maybe a couple more times before you know you can use it one year later in a, in a, in a test, you know? Yeah. so. Uh, if there was like a program that you know could, uh, uh, which I understand there 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 are options, and then also with the fact that uh, the online platform for uh, content delivery today, like uh, the curriculum delivery, it's it's you know for me, you know back then in our during our time we had to come into class and work with the slides for that day, you know. So, but it's different when you can just go online and. Just the way, you, you, you know how before you have to watch movies one at a time whenever the show comes on and then over time people evolve into binge watching <laughs> where you can just, you know, take a whole season and finish it in a couple hours, right? So same here uh, for if you can manage it, uh, it's a good deal in my opinion if you can 
uh, being study, you know, and, and, and lump the certifications together, especially for the advantage of uh, the, the overlapping topics and, you know, put everything together and just go for it. It's, it's, but I think you also said something the other day, which, which I agree with. It's not just you know, like I've used the example over time, just learning to drive a bus by reading a book. Like, you know, you said, I agree. You still got to, uh, when you learn A+, plus, you still have to do physically, you know, you can't skip. Like, you can't skip how to build a computer, what a power supply is, what a hard drive is, and physically do those, you know. How to set up a network. I mean, you have to combine whether it's in the HTA lab in COVID at home, some, you know, you still need those practical knowledge of, you know, working in yeah. with IP networks and security and, you know, and it's not easy if you don't have a job, like how do you get that? But if you go, if you have in this example, like you said, all three certifications and you go to interview somewhere, like, like you just said, you, you learn so much of your knowledge on the job, right? going yeah. to visit customers and stuff it it bolstered your not so you know i think you said it probably better than i did you don't just just study and you know memorize how to take the test you've got to uh, oh, experience yes. it you've got to experience it it's a progression it's uh it's like learning a new language it's like uh trying to learn a new way of life kind of right so uh you it, it should be a process Right, it's not just about uh, trying to run home with a certificate. It's not that because trust me, when you start your job, everything that's in the curriculum that you expected to know—not just know to pass, but know to be able to apply, know to be able to you know talk about or you know um, consider while trying to build something else—you know, uh, all of those things are important. Every single one of them. So uh, you don't want to get to your job and then, uh, uh, you know, and have people ask you, but I thought you were, you know, Security Plus certified. <laughs> How come you don't know about encryption? <laughs> yeah, and then, right. you, you know, you're limited to just what you needed to know to pass. No, that's not, in my opinion, you know, it's, it's you need to really be able to deliver on, on contents that you're, you know, uh, uh, assimilating over the course of your study. It's, it's important to be able to do that. Well, That's what makes you stand out. Well, yeah. And because it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, sitting into, you know, doing something practical or getting an internship or an apprenticeship, anything, in my opinion, you can do, even take an odd job of whatever, it, just so long as you're fixing computers all day or, or whatever, right? Network support. Right. If you immerse yourself in it, even though it might not be your ultimate job, but taking a part-time job working on networks or whatever, I mean, you're going to learn knowledge and you're going to, you know, do things that you couldn't have done just studying in a book. So, right, right. Um, I guess the last thing I wanted to ask is, so, so from an income, everybody, you know, like, like, you know, I always preach, it's like, you know, you got to kind of do what you love and you're passionate about. That's important anytime you do, but also it's important, like you said, and, you know, and I know supporting a family so, you know, income, would you definitely say your income has progressed significantly since you uh, take these certifications, pass the certification to get you the better job? Tell, talk to the students about, you know, you know income expectations. Um, well, I, that's the word right there, income expectations. Uh, coming into, uh, you know, the, op the opportunity you gave me coming into the uh, company, uh, I record, it was a significant income jump for me. And of course, um, I mean, on and off, um, going uh, two years, thereabouts, you know. So, uh, of course, within reasonable expectations, it's that you can't double your pay in two years, right? But definitely, there have been pay increases yearly in my case, you know, there have been pay increases. And I, uh, definitely, they have been, an, a, you know, an improvement in income, you know, for me from the job, from uh, from all of the like from the yeah from the job I would say I mean leave it at that yeah there have been pay increases but the the big part here is um, 
you know, I'm, I'm, of course, you know, you, you don't want to uh, make a habit of, you know, hopping from job to job. But, you know, at some point when you grow to a point, right, and then um, you realize what your value should be, right? Uh, in, in my case, I mean, I'm, I'm being careful, you know, how to put it here because, you know, it's, it's like a double-edged sword. You don't want to say, hey, there's always going to be someone out there who values you more, who will pay you better. Uh, it is true, but, you know, you don't want to go out to go searching for such people uh, because trying to trying to get in with such people might be difficult if you cannot show a good track record of staying with one person yeah. because they're gonna think that you're gonna be there for two weeks. Job hoppers, you get, yeah. yeah, you know. So uh, that's why I'm being careful here. But uh, the truth is, uh, when you like right now, whoever is listening right now and figures out the highest they can ever get paid for their current skill set it's a finite number and then put an a plus on top of it and some decent experience a better resume and a better you know potentially i think that finite number goes higher i think so now put a network plus on top of that i think it goes still higher mm -hmm. put a security plus on top of that i think it goes still higher and then guess what it gets to a point where uh, over time if you can put all this together and you know actually make something with it. Uh, cybersecurity professionals today are being paid in six figures. I don't know how much you earn for now, but a six figures is not is not chump change. It's, it's good money. <laughs> you know, so and so over time it's not gonna be my up in one day, but it's a journey. And uh, in my in my it's it's okay for me to like for me I'm I'm okay with just realizing that the end of the journey to destination is good. That's it. So as long as I'm headed that way, I'm, I'm okay. That's how I, uh, when it comes to the whole income thing, that's what I look at. I look at that day when, um, you know, this is me and my crazy dreams here, don't <laughs> mind me, but I'm looking at that day when, uh, you know, every, you know, the way Superman is to the rescue and something happens and, and you in, me in all of my, you know, as a cybersecurity professional, uh, gets to save at least my section of the world. You yeah. know, and yeah, just put it. Okay, look at this. This is this is this. We're in the COVID, uh, you know, pandemic right now. Just think of what it will mean to have to be able to uh, to have the vaccine or the cure, so to speak, for COVID. That person, I mean, it's it's that person is made. It's, yeah, <laughs> it, it is made. You know, so uh, there could be some potential, you know, uh, uh, incident that would happen in the future, and for some reason, the mix of your experience, your training, uh, your, I mean, inspirations, whatever it is that gets you going, the mixture of all of that, you know, and then fate makes you be the person that can take care of that. And the whole world realizes that and then comes trooping to your door. Absolutely. You know, you're a mate. So. That's a good way of putting it because you've done the work and preparation to arrive yes. at that moment. Yeah. And, uh, you know, appreciate your uh, everything you've been doing. I've got one more last kind of word if you could share with uh, our new uh, students. As you've said it, Time and a time, and, and it sets what you just said about the commitment. What about starting the journey like you did uh, in A plus or a, a new career? Could be any, but it's IT. What about the commitment to themselves to start something like A plus and be serious and dedicated to get to the end, practice, you know, and pass the certification? I mean, it's not what I want to get at is it's not like you roll out of bed and you say, well, maybe I'll do some A-plus today, or, you know, maybe I'll, you know, because you came in, and you had a goal, you you finished a lot faster, Early. earlier. Mm -hmm. But if you could explain, just put in your words, and not mine, what somebody that starts this should be a commit commitment to themselves about, and why? you know, yeah, just whatever. You, I think you understand, like, what I'm I get it, at. I get it. Okay, um, uh, what, what I would say is, you know, uh, 
what's important in my opinion is know where you are right now and know where you want to be right just 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 that that bit of information where i am and where i want to be um there, there's so much you can achieve by just taking that into cognizance right so uh, the next thing is you know how how hungry are you how how much do you want it where you want to be how much do you want it it's it's now i i'm i'm being, I'm being very blunt here because if you don't want it as much it doesn't matter. You you're not you're not gonna you know it's it's the A plus the network plus. I mean, it's easy to talk about it. It's not a it's not an easy journey to take on. No, people have failed. You know, trying. You know, they failed, and 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 that's even still putting in an effort. So now think of someone who's not even making any attempt to put in an effort. It's it's not this it's not sheer luck. No, it's it's dedication. It's it's you realizing it's you being hungry. I don't know how else to put it. I, I was hungry. You know, when you're hungry, you want food. It doesn't matter what you want food, right? So, I was hungry. I I wanted better for myself, and I, I I chased it. Like, you're hungry, you go to the kitchen. You you make it happen. You're hungry for more. Uh, you got a good opportunity, like. Uh, very good training with Hope Training Academy and go for it. It's that simple. So, but the moment you are trying to get complacent, the moment you're, I uh, do it tomorrow. Trust me, you. that's one day further for you. That's your goal, one day further. That's one extra day at a job you probably didn't want to stay that long in. That's, that's how I look at it. So uh, for every day, for every class, in my opinion, that's me being one step closer to my goal. So um, I mean, I'm, I'm not that much of a motivational speaker, but uh, one thing I know for certain, which you know, uh, I think it's the same. It's the foundation of every motivational speech ever. Is you know, in my I broke it down to know where you are, know where you want to be. And then be able to tell yourself the truth about how much you want it. That's it. It's it's simple. That it's it's different for everybody. But once you have those, you know, in perspective, I think uh, it would help you take the right decisions. Now you can, you know, run into some difficulty. Like, hey, uh, this content is not working for me, or you know, there's just some stuff that would just happen. Like, oh. Uh, I didn't make it. I, I overlooked this. There are mistakes that happen. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you're losing sight of your goal. If it happens, just stand up and, and go again. It's that simple. Take stock of what went wrong. Take care of it. And because even even in the in the IT in while working in IT, there are times when uh, you know it it something just didn't work. Uh, you happens know, happens all the time. Yeah, so that's what troubleshooting is for. You figure out what part of it is not working and what can you do about it, and then you take care of it, and then hopefully it should work. And then sometimes it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, oftentimes, you know, when, when it gets to that point, you know, you you either ask for help, you you know, you drill deeper, like you know, just dig deeper, trying to find out what is wrong. Just clear your head, maybe take a break. You do. You keep at it. So it's same applies to you know that entire you know uh, journey of trying to get your certification. Same thing applies. Absolutely. So, I think that's brilliant. Awesome. If it, you ask was, for help if something isn't working. And yeah. if somebody, yeah, it, ask your instructor, ask a, right. a classmate, ask whoever. Right. That's if where. If isn't working, you ask for help. Right. Because you. Yes. There's always another way to learn, and we're always willing. Like you said, in IT, I've and you've been there too. You know, you have a computer or a network or a problem. It might not work 400 times in a row, but you got to try 401 and 402 because if you right. just try one and it doesn't work and quit, is the same analogy of a plus. If you take a practice exam. And you get a 30 per, 30%, it's like, oh my God, I don't know. 
you know, no, keep studying. Now get 40%. Right, right. So actually, so thanks, Dej. I mean, that was wonderful. It's a, you're a great inspiration to all of us, all of our Thank students. You. And, you know, thanks for the great, you know, work that you've been doing and, you know, the great stuff you're doing for, you. for your family. So, you know, keep up the, the great work. Thank you so and much. And thanks for visit us. spending this time. I will. I hope to. I hope work brings me over. <laughs> it's the easiest way to travel these days. <laughs> okay, welcome back. So hopefully that you're as inspired as I am every time I, I watch that. I know we recorded it and there was a couple little video glitches in there because it was uh, live video conferencing. But overall, I think you, he provides a, a great message of hope, a great message uh, for inspiration for any of our students that are starting out and everybody's the same. Can I do this? Am I smart enough? Am I, do I have enough time? Do I have, you know, enough experience? Am I going to be able to make it through? You know, uh, it is a fact. Not everybody gets through it because if it was easy, everybody would do it. Everybody would be A plus certified. I know even me, I've been over 20 years in the IT field. Uh, when I got my A plus certification, uh, going through learning how to teach this, I still had to study. I mean, it's, it's, there's a reason why it's the number one industry standard uh, certification for entry level IT. Uh, it covers everything. The book is like this big. And so, uh, but you know, it's worth it. And so hopefully it was um, inspirational for you. Um, and hopefully it uh, gives you the more confidence, even more confidence as you start your journey or you continue your journey with Hope Training Academy because some people, some of our students because of life circumstances, they're mostly adults we deal with here, they have to stop because maybe there's a health issue or something with their job or family. Uh, and we always tell them, you know, if you start with us, we don't, everybody's road looks different, but the only important thing is that you finish. So I don't know how many stories, I mean, s numerous, where people start, and uh, there's an example of April. She was in Dej's class and moved to England, London, London, England, for family. And s stuff didn't work out, and six months later, she came back. First thing she did was call me and say, Rick, I want to get back into the program. We go, great, April, come back in, and let's go. And so, you know, What's your story? We look forward to one day interviewing you like we have Dej as a success. Hopefully you can follow his path and even greater things or enter our cybersecurity program uh, apprenticeship. So anyway, whatever your path is, hopefully Dej's story uh, gave you confidence and inspiration to do everything that you can do to be the most you can be. And we'll be here for Hope Trading Academy to help you every step along the way. So enjoy that. We'll see you in class, uh, hopefully very soon, and have a fantastic rest of your day. Take care.